So what do you get when you mix HP Lovecraft, Bioshock, and a little bit of Half-Life? Deep Madness from Dimension Games, an underwater horror tactical miniatures game. But does the game live up to its ambitious inspirations? Let's find out and discuss five things about Deep Madness. In a game of Deep Madness, you control between four and six characters, depending on the number of players. You also randomly determine six monster types you'll be facing. The game board for a scenario is made up of a series of tiles. Some rooms start out normal, while others are devoured. Additionally, because you're in an underwater station for the game, some tiles will be flooded, causing you to potentially drown and take damage if you stay in them too long. A turn of Deep Madness begins with the Devour phase. You advance the Devour marker one space along a constructed track. Some turns this will activate a special effect keyed to the scenario, but usually it just means devouring a room. Next you perform a Spawn phase. Drawing several cards, each one indicating which type of monster is spawned and how many per room. You next proceed to the activation phase, where player characters and monsters will alternate activations until everyone has gone. On a player's activation, they can perform three actions. Some common options include moving, locking a hatch to block out monsters, attacking with equipment, melee or ranged, and searching for new equipment. During monster activation, each matching monster on the board performs a simple series of actions. If the players can complete the mission's objective before the Devour token reaches the end of the track, or before one character is killed entirely, they win the mission. My first point about the game is a pro, and that's how well the theme is realized and told through narrative writing. You get a ton of creepy, well-written text at the beginning of each mission. You also get fun biographies for each character, and creepy madness effects when your character gains too many madness tokens. Most impressive of all, sometimes defeating a monster will earn you a consciousness card. Each of these cards has a piece of the continuing story of what happened to the station before your characters arrived. These perfectly emulate the feel of audio logs and journal entries in first-person shooters like Bioshock and System Shock. My next point is mixed, but it leans towards pro, and that's the devouring mechanic in the game. On the positive side, devouring a room gives the game an increasing level of tension as the board becomes more dangerous to your characters. Additionally, because the order in which rooms are devoured is random, it gives the game a lot more variety. It is a bit of an annoyance to have to move everything off a tile to flip it. Additionally, the devouring our tokens are very small and a little hard to see during gameplay. My number three is another pro, and that's the fantastic drowning mechanic in the game. Every time you take an action in a flooded room, your oxygen level goes down by one, and eventually you start taking damage. This leads to incredibly tense push-your-luck decisions. How long do you want to risk suffocation while completing objectives and fighting monsters in the flooded spaces? My number two is another mix, again leaning pro, and that's the monster variety and how the monsters and players activate in the game. Even in the base game, the monster variety is excellent. Each of these monsters requires truly different tactics to defeat, and because you select a random set of six of them for each game, it again adds a lot to the game's variety even within the same mission. I also love the alternating activation system. Because you can see which characters are going to go before which types of monsters, you have a great amount of tactical choice in how you deal with monsters, preferably before they activate. The game has a bit of a zombicide problem in that a ton of miniatures can be spawned on the board. While each enemy's activation is incredibly quick and simple, it can add a little bit to the game's playtime and management. My final point is a big one, and it's one of the coolest mechanics in the game. And that's how characters use sanity and how that sanity can be converted into madness. Each character has a unique ability that allows them to exhaust sanity to perform a cool effect. But beyond that, characters can always exhaust sanity to reroll dice results they don't don't like in pretty much any role in the game. When a monster is defeated in the game, the character defeating them flips an amount of sanity equal to the monster's horror rating onto its madness side. 
Whenever a character gains a third Madness token, they discard them all and draw a Madness card with thematic text and often a permanent negative effect. This really unique blend of resource management and luck mitigation gives players more choices and is also completely thematic with the horror theme of the game. Overall, I'm really impressed with Deep Madness. The theme and the writing is fully realized, and the devoured rooms, drowning mechanics, and just all those enemies make it one of the tensest games I've played recently. If you like dungeon crawlers, miniature games, horror games, this one is a slam dunk. Just keep in mind that the difficulty is very high. This is not a forgiving game, so be ready for that mentally when you first play. This is an interesting solo game in that you're performing the same number of actions and dealing with the same number of monsters as you would for a multiplayer game. That makes the balance really tight and gives you a ton of amazing decisions to make on a turn-by-turn -turn basis. That being said, be aware that with all those things to take care of, the game can feel a little more fiddly solo than it does multiplayer. But if you're comfortable handling all of the moving pieces, this is a great and extremely challenging tactical miniatures game. Good gaming, everyone.